We've got two engineers who are going to design two PCBs in only one hour. Who's going to win? Let's find out. Ready, set, go. So we have Nicholas using KiCad and we have Jerry using Altium. We're going to find out is Altium really worth the thousands of dollars that it cost over open source KiCad? Yeah, probably not. So it looks like Nicholas is going with the ESP32. Oh, the ESP32 S3. Good choice. I like that. Okay, Nicholas is already working on the schematic. I did have the okay. project open already, so I don't know if that's cheating. Cheater, cheater. No, that's okay. When you only have a one hour you, to design an entire printed circuit board, you, you've got to take a few shortcuts. All right, luckily the ESP32 is very generous. You only yes. need two capacitors, really. Seems like one of the biggest uh, things that helps with speed up PCB design software is uh, using software that has a, a big library of parts. Altium obviously is, uh, I'm sure, excellent at that. Yeah, I've built a lot of my own over the years because some of the default Altium stuff I didn't like. There's a few little tweaks I like to make to them. Yeah, Kaka is pretty good too. A lot of stuff. Okay, looks like uh, Jerry's going with a old school regulator, it looks like. Linear regulator. Yeah, good old. Oh yeah, power. That's a good idea. Classic. Jerry's doing a USB-C living on the edge. Yeah. Like that. And Nicholas is gone shopping. I guess so. Yeah, maybe an LDO. Yeah. Which uh, regulator did you go with, Nicholas? What made, I know that part number. Was it uh, Diodes Incorporated? Yeah. We get to see the behind the scenes that experienced engineers don't know everything. Nicholas had to look up the 5.1K. I think I would have as well if I hadn't just recently designed a USB. Yeah, let's see. Do it every day. So I, I grabbed this from one of my schematics for this. For this, so I already got it. So I have the schematic ready to go. Cheater, cheater, okay. <laughs> Probably the smart move. What do you guys have planned for your programming interface? Are you going to do it through the USB or? I plan on using the USB. I do have a JTAG, but I, I think I'm just going to do the USB, so. Yeah, I'll do JTAG for debugging, which is usually nice to have for step debugging. Oh yeah, totally. So anyone not familiar with the, the ESP32, this is the ESP32 S3. When it originally came out, there was pretty much just the ESP32. Now there are lots of different versions, and the S3 is the is the most powerful non-microprocessor version. Um, it offers both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Be sure you download your free guide from ESP32 Prototype to Production using the link in the description below. I'm just going to start tracing. That's fun. It is fun. Oh, no. Oh, Nicholas is already moving over to the PCB. I think you're doing pretty quick, though, so I think you're going to have time to add some to it. Ah, uh, yes. Jerry, you're using the ESP32 S2. Oh, yeah. So they're they're pretty similar. If I recall, I think the S3 is a, is a dual core versus a single core, and I don't think the S2 includes Bluetooth. I'm pretty sure it's Wi-Fi only. Are you adding ESD? Is that what you're... What do yeah. You okay. Like ESD protection, 5 volt, yeah. Jerry, aren't you the one that told me you typically a lot of times like to do the, the first design without any ESD production? Or? Yeah. Even when I do add ESD, if I'm doing a prototype, sometimes I'll leave that off and I test it. I've had issues in the past where it affected the signaling and things like that. Jerry, don't you wish there was an automated way of connecting all the grounds up? <laughs> Yeah, there might be an Altium, I just don't know. This somehow got really messed up. What got messed up on you, Nicholas? These differential tracks. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't update it. I think it used to work better in the past, and they up I'm on the latest version. For some reason, I don't know, I feel like they don't work as well as they used to. Probably should start a board. Yes, Nicholas is already on the board. Getting behind here. Well, it seems like you're doing more stuff than I am for some reason. I feel like I have less symbols so far. Jerry has a line. I see one line on your PCB. Good start. <laughs> Got to do an outline here. A one edge PCB. That would be quite interesting. I will add more lines soon. Okay. Nicholas officially has a PCB or that does something. It will turn on an LED. It's nice about the sheets too, is that when you lay out the sheets, it places all the components for that sheet close together. So I like to kind of solve them in groups. Yeah, up, yeah, really. yeah. Me, I do the same thing. Jerry is getting his board layout still set up. I see Nicholas uh, likes to keep the rat lines on, those blue lines you see kind of showing a direct connection between everything. I Altium has auto routing, right? Yeah, yeah, but I don't use it. How much time is left? How far away now? We're coming up on 30 minutes, but not quite yet. If I do maybe a couple buttons. Yeah, one button, two buttons. We'll do two of them. Okay, I have at least two, right? Okay, yeah. 
who get lonely by themselves. So as you can see, Nicholas is doing this right where the antenna hangs off of the board. And uh, typically you want it either in the center of the board or maybe at a corner. Oh, looking good, Nicholas. All right, antenna keep it. Might be able to hide that action. Is that part of the comments? Yeah. What are you laying out there, Nicholas? Was that the board That's edge the or copper? Copper pour out. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. I just okay. did it really sloppy. Okay, looks like Nicholas is adding some ground views. There is actually a plugin to do that. I think I had it and then I updated it and then I think I got rid of my plugins. But. Oh, okay. Oh, really? I did not know that. I always just do it manually as well. Are you doing just a, a two layer board? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, we are a few minutes past the halfway mark. I see some transistors there. What were those transistors? Yeah, I'm doing a little bit of a PLC style output. Oh, okay, nice. So we have an indicator LED and then uh, basically an open collector style output circuit. So, Nicholas, you're you're not programming through the USB port? Is that what you're you're looking at? Well, I am, but the um, I think there's another USB that they usually have the schematic for um, transistors, so that way it puts it in program mode automatically when you flash it. Yeah, I would say the one thing about KaiKai is like the symbol search really isn't that good. Yeah, I I agree. Wish it did better fuzzy search. Maybe Altium is better. I've not really used Altium, but that's one thing I do like about Altium. I started getting into KaiCad more, but Altium's a uh, uh, schematic footprint stuff. Once you once you understand it, actually, is is pretty intuitive. I used to use Dip Trace. Was what I used yeah, for was quite like a while. First one ever. That was your first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I started doing Eagle CAD for a little bit, and I noticed KaiCad and Eagle CAD actually function pretty close the same in a lot of ways. Oh, that's good. Oh, Eagle CAD is the worst. I hate Eagle CAD. No. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. So Nicholas, you're you've got pretty much everything else on the PCB already, right? You're just you're now adding yeah, the extra stuff. A, yeah, maybe a submotor driver. I mean, it's a very unoptimized layout for sure. Of course, of course, yeah. You've not run uh, like a schematic verification or DRC yet, though, have you, Nicholas? I didn't. Well, I think I did. Yeah, it does automatically, but there was just errors. Like I'm probably not using the right switch footprint. It looks like, and I'm not using the right USB-C footprint. Gotcha. Um, As you're seeing here, you typically spend about half your time in the PCB software and the other half in the data sheets. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas, did you just draw through the resistor and then it, it connected both up? That's, yeah, it's pretty, I, I don't know when they added that. Oh, okay, I've not done that before. That seemed nice. <laughs> what are you working on here, Jerry? It looks like uh, you're looking at your, your rules, what spacing rules that you've got set yeah, up? Yeah, this, this is a new install of Altium, so it doesn't have all the stuff set up that I had. Um, I just wanted to change the trace size. I'm gonna see if I can just do it from here. So actually, KiCad has this plugin for PCB Way that basically takes your Gerber and then outputs it for their fabrication outputs. Um, but I actually haven't had to modify my stack up at all. I pretty much kept it identical to what came with KiCad, so I have to play around with that at all. I assume, Jerry, that Altium uh, obviously has a, a 3D model tool. Yeah, you can import step models as your 3D model. It actually has a rudimentary little 3D generator. You can do cylinders and squares and stuff like that. But I like to either find the model or go into FreeCAD and create the model. Make sure that I have a 3D model for everything. I will say the 3D modeling in KiCad is pretty nice how it can generate uh, probably your different components to different step files. How you can export the actual board as well as a step file. Okay, we have about six minutes left. Oh wow, that's a big switch. Yeah, that is. It's a little, uh, I'm not sure what to say about that. Maybe I just won't say anything. It's to help you from not missing it and accidentally shorting yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, you're not gonna miss it. That's a killer. Ooh, I think I'm gonna make an enclosure for this, actually. Oh, now you're just showing off. What is U2? Is that your regulator, Jerry? Yeah, U2 is the regulator. Okay. This is really rough routing. I'm in a hurry. I'm just come down here. Oh, looking good, Nicholas. Looking good. Yeah, I'm just going to try to make something really simple. Again, we have Jerry Black on Altium, and we have Nicholas Montoya on KiCad. And Nicholas, you did rounded edges and everything. Fancy. Well, now the latest version of KiCad added the ability to fill at the edges directly from the edge cut outline. Oh, uh, interesting. Okay. It's definitely not necessary, but it makes it look a little nicer. The core contributors to KiCad are really doing a good job with all these new features. Yeah, they definitely seem to be constantly adding new features. I think Altium, uh, maybe I'm wrong, Jerry, but I feel like it's about $8,000 or something. I think 12 for the perpetual license, yeah. Yeah, it seems like Altium is best if you do this kind of stuff every day. I'm, like I said, I'm getting more into KiCad. 
because this is quite expensive. So. Oh no! Now you're going to bring up is it KiCat or KiCat? I've stuck through this whole thing. Oh I'm yeah, Kai that's Kat. true. I, I did a couple of YouTube surfing to see if what it was, but KiCat seems to be the prominent one, but I'm not totally sure yet. Oh okay, see, because I was calling it KiCat, but then I heard it being more prominently called KiCat, so I switched it. Oh, look at you go, Nicholas! Man, you got an enclosure. Pretty basic, but yeah. I don't think I even knew you did a 3D design. I knew Jerry did, but I didn't know Nicholas did. Okay, we have one minute left. One minute left. Jerry's putting in some, looks like some power supply vias. I got a plane for the power, for the ground, and I need to make sure that it comes through to here. Are you doing a two-layer board, Jerry, or four? Just two-layer. I used to do four-layer all the time and do a power and a ground in the middle, but it's actually a lot cheaper to do a two-layer. Okay, we are down to the final 10 seconds. Hurry up, hurry up, go, 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 go. Okay, guys, time is up. If you want to maybe... Do a quick zoom out and kind of show what you've done. Jerry, let's start with you. Do you mind bringing up your schematic real quick? Okay, that's too many. Got a couple outputs. Your input, okay. Here's here's the power. Oh, okay, there's your USB-C with your power regulator. And we have the IOs right here. Oh, okay, and then your IOs on a separate sheet. And then let's take one last peek at your PCB that you didn't quite finish, yeah. but that's okay, okay. It's very square. The wireless module's in the right place, so it's 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 a good start in the right direction. You don't have the USB C in the middle of the board. That's yeah, it's on the edge, so you can plug things in it. It's on the edge. Okay, great. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Let's take a look at what Nicholas did here. You did the ESP thirty two S three. Here I have the power stuff, LDO, and then I have a stepper motor IC that doesn't really do anything. Uh, looks impressive though. It looks like a really important chip there with nothing connected. Exactly. <laughs> it's a lot of pins not doing anything. And then USB-C and PCB, pretty simple. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I think you guys both did a great job. Okay, so who do you think won? Be sure you let us know in the comments below. Do you think Altium won or was it KiCad or KiCad? One of those two. Also, don't forget to download your free guide from ESP32 Prototype to production using the link below.